Hello traders, let's just jump right into it. The S&P has a handle right here. We discussed this in detail yesterday. Fed futures from September are hitting all time highs. The dollar is bouncing off support and closing back over the 55 day moving average. All of this is happening as the NASDAQ is breaking out of a cup and handle. We are going to go over exactly what is going on. Three names you need to watch tomorrow that came out with earnings tonight that are moving after hours and what to watch tomorrow in the indexes. So let's start right here. We talked yesterday about the NASDAQ. We talked about this move viewing this as a cup, viewing this as a handle. Here's the handle and here is the breakout. It doesn't get much cleaner than that. Here was the low end where we have the doji and then it looked like we were going to break, but we didn't, did we? We actually broke out. Now that break is significant. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, click all notifications if you're interested in updates and alerts on the stock market. Everything we go over is very timely. So you want to make sure you hit the notification button so you're notified. Also, I'm putting out two actionable charts a day now on the community tab, and you only see those if you are subscribed. So here's our little break. It's there. You can call it what you want, but no matter what you call it, it's definitely there. If we zoom in on volume, you can see you have above average volume the previous day, and now we have flipped and we are pushing. Now, what we need to ask ourselves is, if the dollar is rising, which it clearly is by this break right here, we all see it, that is a signal. This is that three bar pattern we talked about in the newsletter that goes out. Make sure you get the newsletter link in description below. And what we're seeing here is we're seeing this break and now we're pushing higher, but the NASDAQ and the S&P do not seem to care. This is a technical break out of that wedge line. This is leading to a full technical break of the handle. So when we broke down here and it looked like we were gonna roll and break back down and undertook that lower low, that is what you would call a trap. And this is to trap bears in the market so that they short. You get your little reversal and undercut and then you flip and you form this perfect wedge that you're now closing and breaking out of. Which Bank came out and said today that we might even see two more 25 basis point hikes than we think. And what's fascinating about that is we have this red bar right here, huge selling bar right into this. No one cared. I said it yesterday and I'll say it again, nobody really cares anymore. And I think that there's a couple reasons for that. In front of us is the NASDAQ and the Chinese large caps, and we're looking at them in relation. And what we can see since the beginning of the year, we're starting to see the NASDAQ outperform China. Now that would mean that we're probably seeing more inflows into this, and it looks like we're actually setting up to break out of this. This is pretty significant because this means that we are seeing more inflows, obviously, into the U.S. technology sector than we are seeing into China. This is the EEM, which is the emerging markets, in relation to the U.S. dollar. Now, what you can see from November, from when we bottomed in the stock market right around the same time, is we had a huge run. What are we seeing since about January, actually really since the beginning of early February, is we're just seeing that the emerging markets is not performing anywhere near as good as it was against the US dollar, and it's starting to lose that correlation. This is the Euro stocks 50 index, it's a futures. Now, if you take a look at this, we're almost near the highs from 2021, very different than the S&P. Now, if we look at the relative performance of the European markets, those 50, in regards to the stock market, our NASDAQ, the technology sector, you can see that we were selling down even into January, the underperformance, and now you can see that we're starting to try to flip here and go higher. What does all this mean? It means we're seeing rotation back into certain tech names. If you take a look at IGV, this is extended tech. You're thinking Oracle, those kinds of names. Microsoft, anything like that, Intuit are in here. And take a look at what's going on here. We have this 55 starting to point up. I'm just leaving it in line form because we're just really trying to get an understanding of where we're at. Now, if you think about this and you think about that Euro chart from a straight valuation basis without us getting into it, where do you think the value is in the market right now? As one senior analyst put it, they can either go out there and buy semiconductors that are trading on average around 15 to $16 on PE, or they can go out there and buy the inflated European sector right now that's trading significantly higher. And I think that that's what we're seeing. I think we're seeing a good old fashioned rotation. Now you have this little DTL right here on the 
semiconductor index, and you can see how you're trying to break out here. You have a little flag, and then you're setting up to push. These kinds of names are always fascinating to me because it doesn't really matter who wins. In other words, it doesn't really matter if it's Google, it doesn't really matter if it is Microsoft. NVIDIA is going to be the guy. They're gonna be the ones with the chips that are gonna benefit the most from this. And the reason for that is the same thing with the gold rush. The people that made the money were the banks and the person that sold the picks and the axes. They consistently made money. People are going to go out there and buy NVIDIA products and they're estimated that they're gonna be something like 4X the amount of storage needed over the next 10 years. It's not something to sneeze at. Now, this is something that we actually bought in the trading community down here around 20, more like 212, 213, actually, right down here on an hourly chart. And then what we did was just watch it trade right up into our level, still have the position. And the reason I'm bringing it up is I'm not sure it's done and I'm not sure it just doesn't sit here for a while. But you need to have this on your radar and you need to be watching this going into earnings, which it's coming out on the 22nd. Do not rule this out. This had every reason to sell down yesterday and it did not. It had every reason to sell down today and it did not. Strong dollar breaking above the 55, Fed futures hitting all time highs and NVIDIA is forming a flag right under major resistance. It tells you everything you need to know. And one of the sayings I love is just trade what's in front of you. Don't overcomplicate it. This was the number one stock yesterday that was in the comments. So every night I'm gonna ask what the number one stock is for people to look at. LSCC was the number one stock. Look at this breakout right from that level. It's perfect right from that 85 and you just it just kept pushing right after earnings. So you can see the earnings surprise, but the bottom line is we just kept on going. So do not rule out semiconductors and certainly do not rule out the cloud space. Software names are on fire. If you take a look at them right now, they are just absolutely exploding between net and its earnings, which were stellar. And look at this above average volume just picking up there. And look at these earnings. You beat your earnings estimate by 33%. So this is staggering. These are not signs that you're in this major recession. Now, I don't know what happens next quarter. Quite frankly, no one knows what happens next quarter or they would have told us that this quarter was going to be really good. And we have a 68 or 69% upside surprise this quarter to what the averages were. And that is to according to Goldman Sachs. I wanna go over a couple other names here. So. I see a lot of people looking at these names and still wanting to short them. I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't, especially when you get back up to this level, but you have massive momentum behind you right now in coin and in SI. These are names that we were both long in the trading community. To be added to the wait list to get into the community, simply click the link up here on the right. And I just wanna point them out. We're, and we're keeping them as very short-term trades in and out of them, but you're starting to see a lot of momentum come into this. I would not rule out the fact that you just saw Citadel take a 5% stake, BlackRock took a 6% stake and did nothing with it, even with the company facing scrutiny. It did nothing. You have huge short sellers that are trying to push this down. Nothing affected it. And I would not rule these names out right now. This is Bitcoin. Very rarely do I look at this, but when you start seeing these long green bars like this, where you're up dramatically, where you're having a day where you're up almost 10%, you need to pay attention because somebody's putting money to work here. Very similar to how we saw this and then everyone thought it was gonna dissipate and then it was day after day of this happening. You don't know how long this is gonna go on for, but I will say this, if you can flip this 24 level, you're looking at getting to that 25, then you have 27 up here. And you could see this happen. You could see us get up through these levels and continue to push. Twilo, Number one stock you need to watch tomorrow for earnings surprises on the upside. We saw how the earnings surprises did today. UPST, some of these other names, they were just absolute monsters today. Airbnb. Now, if you take a look at what's going on here, this is where we closed, and this is the post where you're at 74.35. Excellent quarter from what I can see. The conference call is either going on now or will be going on later this evening. Most important thing, $1 billion buyback. Companies that are buying their stock back right now are not worried about a recession. You would not be buying your stock back if you were concerned about cash flow. This is absolutely huge. I would expect it to fill this gap tomorrow and then we're gonna to have to see what happens from there. Roku actually beat expectations. So if you take a look at this, you can just see we reported a $1.70 loss versus 72 
and revenue was actually 867 versus 802. So these, this was overall a decent quarter. Again, I'm not privy to the conference call right now because I try to record these ahead of time, but just watch how we act when we get to that 73 and a half. This is where we ran into some issues before, but these are going well. These conference calls are going well tonight and they are not signs of a market that is pulling back. We went through this with uh, Monday the other day, even on these really good quarters, you were stagnant for a day to digest digested, and then all of a sudden they just catch on. Same exact thing could happen tomorrow. Companies are going to be rewarded for good numbers. Shops report was mixed, but it's worth going over because we actually gapped up and now we're gapping down. What I just wanna point out is where we're gapping down to we're gapping down directly to that 4890 level. This level's pretty significant, flipped it. It looks like we're holding it for support, but watch that tomorrow, because if we can open around that level and then bounce, that could have a significant move tomorrow. Now, if you take nothing else from this video today, please take out the fact that you have a handle right here. And that handle, they keep trying to break you down over and over and over again. And you can see it right in here. They break you down as if it's gonna break. Here's a doji as if it's gonna break. And then what do they do? They rally us back up. These are little traps that are being set for bears. Notice how people out there buying puts or are shorting the market right now are having a much harder time than they've ever had before. Just be aware of that. Everybody have a great evening. <laughs>